got to bring good evening to you, the lovely love of tube. Hope you're out today, hope you're in ground levels when you're world! Welcome to a guitar collection update video. Since the uh, great guitar core of 2017, this is what I have left, I'm going to show you today. So, uh, first up today, I'm going to do acoustics. Um, this is my 70s Echo Ranger uh, 11 string, as I get rid of the octave G, as I don't like it. Same as John Butler. I nicked the idea from him, so it's not my idea, so I, I'm a thief, basically. But anyway, uh, basically, this is the, like, the best 12 string I've ever played. It's the most easy to play, and it, the neck is absolutely... It's just perfect. As 12 string acoustics go, some 12 string acoustics can be those absolute pigs. It's like trying to wrestle a wild ox. But um, this one is just heaven to play and it sounds immense i love the sound it's really fat and warm sounding and i've got it in um c standard so it's tuned down really far but it sounds great and there's something about it in that tuning it seems to w really be happy in that tuning so yeah this is the first guitar of the day it's a bolt on neck it's a uh, yeah echo ranger uh, this was actually um given to me by my friend John from uh, Old Hack Guitars um, and I thank him every day for this because it's the best toss string I've ever played it's really really cool yeah Echo Ranger 12 string first guitar let's move on to the next one now This is my SX brand uh, resonator, and again, like the Echo, it's the best resonator I've, I've played uh, that just works for me. I don't know what it is about it, I just love it. It just works, um, and I love the sound of it, and I love the way it plays, I love the neck, I love the fact you can't get past the 12th fret without a struggle. Uh, it's just really cool, and being a massive Roy Gallagher nut, I had to have a resonator, so this was a gift. I bought this on one of my birthdays, I forget, quite a while back. Uh, it was kind of like my present to myself, really. And it's just one of those things, being a blues nut, that I needed for recording and just gigging. I've gigged it quite a bit. And it's just one of those guitars. It's got that sound. Especially with slide. It's got really, really... really cool sound to it. So this is my SX Resonator. Absolutely love it to bits. Yeah, awesome, awesome guitar. So uh, moving on to my next guitar now, my Tanglewood Acoustic, my workhorse acoustic. Okay, okay so next guitar, as I said, yes, is my Tanglewood Workhorse Acoustic. Uh, I needed, um, I did have an acoustic, but it wasn't any good. I needed one for some gigs I was doing and for recording. So I went to a um, local guitar shop that um, sadly to say isn't there anymore and I spent all afternoon trying out acoustics and I kept coming back to this one. It just, again, like all my, like all my guitars, they kind of drew me to them. It's very, very weird um, thing to, it's probably really silly to say, but they did. Um, and I just kept coming back to this one. I'd go away, try another one and I'd keep coming back to this guitar and eventually was like this this is the one this is my acoustic and it's kind of uh, that was many many moons ago about this guitar forever and it's absolutely it's scratched beaten battered it's you probably won't see it on the camera but it's had a lot of use and it's, it's a gorgeous guitar it's like a satin finish and i absolutely love it to bits it, it reminds me of a martin it kind of feels like a martin if that makes any sense um 
like a small bodied one, it's really, really cool. And uh, yeah, I just bought it that day because I needed it, I really needed a good acoustic to be able to gig with and to record with. And I was like, right, well, that's the one then. And it's, uh, yeah, and it's served me well ever since. The only problem now is the bridge on the trouble side is starting to lift. And I'm going to have to get that looked at because I don't want it to break um, because it's my favourite acoustic. I absolutely love this thing and it sounds great. <laughs> sound about it. and it's extremely loud which I love in an acoustic I don't like quiet acoustics and uh, yeah it's had a lot of beasting over the years and it's still going strong apart from that and I absolutely love it to bits yeah and it's a premier series um, the model's ridiculously long uh, if anybody wants to know what model it is I'll uh, uh, put a comment in the description box uh, put a comment below and I'll uh, I'll uh, I'll, exp I'll put in what it actually says inside. But yeah, awesome guitar, Tanglewood. Moving on to, oh, electrics now. That's all my acoustics. Let's move on to Les Pauls. Okie dokie. So uh, first guitar of the Les Paul part of my collection, which isn't very big, is uh, my old Epiphone Les Paul standard, I suppose it'd be called. It's the Korean one. Uh, I think it's 2000, 2002. Um, and it's all stock, really, uh, apart from the uh, the, the taller reflector knobs that I've put on it because I can just get to them better. But um, yeah, this is the guitar that my mum and dad bought me way back when. When I, I think I got this when I was yeah, I got this when I was 17, and uh, my mum and dad bought me this for my birthday uh, because I wanted to be Slash at the time. So um, and all that was my Washburn and my, and my uh, Squire Strat. So I wanted a Les Paul. So uh, my mum and dad bought me this for my birthday, which was extremely cool. And um, I've got a massive attachment to this guitar because I've just had it for such a long period of time. As you know, I've, I've done videos on it before. I mean, you know, you know all the story on this guitar, and you know if you've seen all the other videos. But yeah, I've got a really big attachment to this guitar, and it's just really, it's very special to me. And um, it's one of those guitars that will never, ever leave me. It'll always be with me for as you know as long as I'm actually breathing, basically. Um, and it sounds amazing. Uh, I've Peter greened it. I also took the covers off and got rid of all the wax on the pickups. So I waxed stick to pickups, and I got rid of it. And it just came alive as soon as all the wax came off. <laughs> Does that Les Paul thing it makes me want to go a bit mental and try to be slap, try and be slash? That's what this guitar does to me. <laughs> but yeah, my 2002 F Phone Les Paul is still here and I love it to bits. And it's got a really nice flame top. I don't know if it's a veneer or an actual actual top. I've heard they're actual maple capped, but I don't know. Anyway, that's my uh, first of the Les Pauls I have, and again, it's just that. Uh, it's the one that will always be with me, this one, definitely. If um, if I had to keep one Les Paul, it'd be this one. Okay, so uh, moving on to the next one now. <laughs> Recently, this is my uh, newly acquired 70s Columbus Les Paul custom copy. Um, not much to say other than I love it. Uh, people have been sending some information, and apparently, these are stock pickups, which is really, really cool. I think it's the late 70s model, this one, but uh, these are apparently stock pickups, and apparently, they uh, go go to go. I don't know how you say it, but it's spelt G O T O H. 
and I don't. I've, I always, I've always said Goto. I don't, I don't know if that's how you do it. Anyway, but either way, oh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this guitar. You've seen it in the video recently. Love it a bit. It's been my go-to Les Paul recently. I just, I don't know what it is. Again, I don't know. I don't know why I'm drawn to certain guitars. I just am. And this is one of them. I absolutely love it to bits. It's so cool. I love how it's worn and aged. It's, it's seen the war, man. It's really, really cool. Love it to bits. So yeah, that's uh, next guitar. Let's move on to the uh, next guitar. What kind of English was that? Okie dokie, the next guitar is one you'll know very well. If you tune into the channel often, it is the vintage V100 Lemon Drop. And it's substantially heavier, 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 than uh, my other two Les Pauls. This thing weighs a ton. Good, get heavy. I don't know if I've ever done that before, where I've gone from one to the other, but this is really heavy, this one. Like, super, super heavy. The, Cl the Columbus is actually kind of hollow body, so, you know, it floats away if you don't push it down. But this one is an absolute beast. Um, yeah, I absolutely love this guitar to pieces, as you well know. It's just got that Les Paul thing. Um. It's just something very special in the sound of it, especially the out of phase as well. It's really, really cool. That kind of um The quacky Peter Green toad. Well, again, it's just perfect. Absolutely perfect Les Paul tone for me. It just as soon as I put this in, uh when the first day I got it, I was just like, yeah, that's that's it. That's the sound. That is the Les Paul sound that's in my head. Absolute singing guitar, especially on that net humbucker, it's just like <gasps> heaven. So, yeah, loveless guitar to absolute the bones of the thing. It's absolutely awesome. But my gravy golly, does it is it heavy? It's a really heavy guitar. But oddly enough, when you stand up, it doesn't feel heavy. It kind of, if I just like lay it down there, it feels really balanced. I don't know why that is. I don't know why heavy guitars can feel so heavy, and then when you actually kind of like stand up with them, they don't feel so heavy. I don't know. I don't know. I'm talking nonsense again. Quiet, Dave, and move on to the next guitar. Vintage Lemon Drop, everybody. Gorgeous guitar. Surf time! <laughs> This is my, <coughs> excuse me, still getting away with my cold. This is my Squire Vintage Modified Jaguar, which I refinished white and gave a matching headstock, as that's what I've always wanted. But apart from that, it's all Squire. I did, I've had, have had to head, 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 I can't talk. I've had to change the volume pot. Uh, the original one died, uh, but I've had to change that, but it did get a lot of use, so I'm not surprised. But this is probably, the easiest guitar I own to play. Uh, I think it's due to the short scale neck. Actually, this and my Washburn are probably the easiest guitars to play. But I think it's to do with short scale, you know, well, short scale, should I say. Um, 
And it's just something about it. It's just very, very easy to play. Very comfy. Ridiculously comfy to play. And it's got the hugest headstock in the world, which is really, really cool. And if you turn it that way, it's like Jaws. Durden. Durden. But really, really cool. With all, with, with all that on, it sounds... <laughs> Squire Jaguar, Vintage Modified, everybody. Oh, amazing guitar, amazing guitar. Moving on to the next one now. It's actually a Squire. Uh, I found out recently. Um, it was originally blue. It's like an electric blue. It's horrible. But uh, somewhere along the line, it's been refinished. But it's a spray over, so the blue is actually still underneath. That's Len playing with his toys, being noisy and obnoxious while I'm trying to do a video. Damn you, Len! But um, yes, yeah, back to the guitar. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, it's a '89 Squire that. Um, was basically branded as a Fender. Oh, and it's a bit bit crackly and scratchy. As you can see, it's got a Fender logo on it. That's That was a normal thing they did for the um, for certain places in the world. They didn't brand the Squires with the Squire logo. It's, it's bizarre. I, I read this uh, little thread on these these, these things uh, quite a while back now, just trying to find out what it was. Because I thought it was like some kind of like weird Fender that, from the 80s that kind of like, no, never did very well. Because it's like a 50s kind of spec guitar it's got a big you know full block uh, tremolo in the back and you know, fender stamp saddles and and the necks one piece maple and the, the body's like um, a two piece body but and it's got goto machine heads locking machine heads but the pickups and the electrics aren't they're not like top spec that they're, you know, they're, they're the ceramic uh, pickups they're really really dark <laughs> super dark but they're kind of like a 50s copy um yeah they did they did in like 89 it's really really strange but it's really really cool and i absolutely love it and this was my first i'm just gonna turn that reverb down it's rattling about but this is my first uh well what i thought at the time was a fender strat um and we bought it off this guy and he was like oh yeah it, it was dirt cheap and it was like you know, a lot of parts need replacing on it now but it was my first kind of Fender Strat, and I was just felt like amazing because I actually had a guitar that had Fender on the headstock. I was like, my God! It was like um, uh, I was being about 18 when I got this guitar, so yeah, about three years into playing. I would have been still 17. No, I'd have been 18 when I got this guitar, and um, no, sorry, I would have been 17 when I got this guitar. So I thought, like, literally, I was the bee's knees because I had a Fender Stratocaster. Um, but yeah, again, this is one of those guitars that will be with me forever just because of what it is and what I've been through with it and the amount of times I've used it. You know, it's just it's just part of me, this guitar is. And I absolutely love it to pieces and just couldn't part with it. Just could not part with it at all. And um, and again, my dad bought me it, so I definitely couldn't part with it just you know, for, that, for that reason alone. Um, but it's an amazing guitar. It's got a really unique sound because of ceramic pickups. And there's just something about it. There's just something about it. And the neck is just wafer thin. I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but it's so thin. Um, but it's so comfy. It's not like a, an Ibanez kind of like, you know, wiggly wiggly neck, but it really is thin and it's so comfy. And everybody who picks it up goes, you're selling this? I'm like, no, I'm not selling it. But good try. But um, 
yeah, it's just one of those guitars that will never leave me, and I just love it to bits. I'll say it does need quite a lot of things replacing. The middle tone, di middle tone dial's broken. The, the jack socket's scratchy. The selector switch is near enough at it. The volume pot is okay, but some of the electrics just need replacing, and it's. I'm awaiting the funds to do so at this point in time. So I'm, I'm, I'm just. It's kind of set out the way this guitar at this point in time. I, I can't play it as much as I'd like to play it because it, it doesn't it doesn't really work at its highest ability. So it's a bit scratchy and you can't really gig it because of that and stuff like that. So it's a bit bit annoying. But I, once I get the money to be able to upgrade it and update some of the parts on it, because it's all stock, uh, I definitely will be doing so. Oh, apart from the five way, it would have originally had a three way, but somebody's put a five way and they've done it wrong. So in position four, you get this weird kind of octavier sound. And I don't know why that is, but it's very, very cool. So hopefully I'll never have to change the selector switch because I really like that. But anyway, yes, uh, 89, Squire, branded as a Fender. Really, really cool. Um, I've only ever seen a few others of these, so really, really cool. Okay, yeah, uh, moving on to the next one now. Uh -huh. still is one of my main gigging guitars it's my vintage v6 icon and um some of the wear i've done some of the wear i haven't done <laughs> um it gets beaten up a lot absolutely beaten our stand on it it gets you know slid around on stage dragged around slid on amps face first it gets whacked into mic stands it gets all sorts of abuse. This guitar does, and I've had it for the long. I've had it for a, what a while now. When did I? When did I, get, I got it in 2013, and it's just one of those guitars that it, it just works. It, it just from from the start, this works. I had two of these V6s. Uh, this is the only one I've got left now, but um, this is the one I chose to keep because it's just. I don't want to say it was better than the other one because that's not really what it comes down to. It just spoke to me more than the other one did it do, there's something about the neck and the way it feels and the sound of it that really you know when i was kind of choosing which one to get rid of to help fund the 62 is like you know well, which what am i get what am i gonna you know which one do i need to keep so i wanted to keep one for gigging um you know in the in the rare event i might actually kind of like be able to go on like tour or anything like that this would be my main touring guitar because I am precious of it, but not precious enough where it, you know it, it gets smashed about a bit. But if somebody stole it, I'd be absolutely mortified, kind of thing. If that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, it's like some of the dints and dents are actual dints and dents. Most of this I did myself. I wanted it. I wanted to look. I wanted to look, to look relic, you know. And and I just love it to bits. It does sound amazing. Uh, it's all stock apart from the volume pot, which I had to change. I wore the original one out, totally wore it out. Um, it's recently the bottom tone pot there, is, that, that, that's died on me as well, I need to replace that. But in all fairness, I don't, excuse me, I don't really use the tones a great deal, so I'm not, I'm not rushing to change it, so to say. But all of that, it's all stock, I say. It was originally black, there's still a little bit of black in it, you can still see bits of black here and there at the end of the finish. But, yeah, this is this is one of my main gigging guitars and will be one of my main gigging guitars until it until it dies basically, um, which you know, touch wood will never happen because I absolutely love its bits and I'll keep keep it working for as long as I can because I love it. So yeah, this is a vintage V6. Ha 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 ha. Um, I say it was black originally, but I went a white one, but a cream one, off color one, and also the scratch plate's not original either. I've added a mint green scratch plate because I love the way they look. But yeah, it just. <laughs> Just something about the sound. It's 
just awesome. It's just awesome. I love this guitar to bits. Absolutely love it to bits. It's so cool. And there's the back. <laughs> uh, but yeah, vintage V6 icon. Originally in Boulevard Black, now it's this colour. But uh, yeah, love this guitar to bits. Move on to the next one. Ha! <laughs> Jimmy Strat is still here, everybody. Um, this is just uh, a Squire Affinity um, that I got bought a long, long time ago. Uh, I've had it refinished in this kind of like off colour cream. Um, I got it done when I was at Old Hat, so it's in proper nitro and it's all cracked and, and checked. It looks really, really cool. Um, I've recently uh, upgraded the pickups. Uh, the original Squire pickups were awful. They, the pickups it came with were, were terrible. They were really thin, bright sounding pickups, and I did not like them at all. And I, I, because of that, I didn't play this guitar a great deal because it was always dead, like just really thin sounding. So I, I, I changed the the bridge and the neck a while back for the bridge was a Fender Mexican standard strap pickup, and the neck was a high output Wilkinson <clears throat> uh, pickup, which I got given. Uh, but then the other day, Mr. Evil Sheep got in touch and um, said, "Oh, would well, I like to try some uh, new pickups he's, he's he's come up with? They're called the Sheep Experience. Five pounds for anybody who guesses who they're based on." And so I was like, "Yes." And they came the other day, and I shoved them in, and they sound immense. But then my selector switch broke in the middle, so I have no middle pickup, which is very annoying. But freaky accident came out of it, and the fact I get this really weird tone. But I'm going to demo it at some point this week, and I don't want to talk about that too much. But these evil sheep pickups in this now make it sound fantastic. <laughs> heads, tremolo, uh, the electrics are all stock, jack sockets all stock, uh, neck, everything. It's pretty much all, all stock Squire Affinity, I say apart from the pickups, scratch plate and uh, refit. Oh and also the, uh, the weird upside down backwards to front Fender logo which everyone always goes, what's that? But yeah, that's it. But yeah, my Jimmy Strat is still here. I could not part with this guitar. Yes, move on to the next one now. Ha ha! Squire. This is my um, second ever, well, second ever guitar me and my brother bought. Again, no, there's no, there's, there's no explanation needed why I can't get rid of this. I've learned so much on this guitar. It really did. It kind of opened the whole world of guitar to me. This one did, as well as my Washburn. It's just, no, I'm so happy I still have this guitar. You know, along my Washburn, my, my first three guitars I say was my my Washburn, this, and, and my my uh, Epiphone Les Paul. 
which are just kind of like you know, that, that's that's where I it all began for me. And those, all, in those three guitars, that's literally where you know the guitar journey started for me. And again, this the Epiphone Les Paul and the Washburn, which I'll show you next. It, it's going to be with me forever. They just they're just those kind of guitars. They're not what they're no longer just guitars. They're no longer the pieces of wood with wires and, and strings on them. They're, they're, they're part of me. They're, they're, they're definitely um, something else. But yeah, I love this guitar to bits. It sounds great. It plays great. It's all stock. Uh, nothing's been messed about with this guitar at all. It's missing a string tree, which I put on another guitar, which uh, recently I have, well, not recently, but I have sold to fund the uh, 62 fund. But um, yeah, I love this guitar to bits. And I remember buying this Fender strap thinking, oh, I've got a strap now, I can buy a Fender strap, because I'm cool. Again, like we all know, I'm not cool, and never have been, and never will be cool. But, um, but yeah, I love this guitar to bits. A lot of memories in this. A lot, a lot of memories in this guitar, and I love it to bits. So, yeah, uh, 1998, Squire Affinity. Still here. <laughs> guitar ladies and gentlemen the washburn maverick series this is literally the beginning of me as a guitar player <sighs> i don't you know oh yeah by the way i never mentioned but i bought the red strap because i wanted to be like billy joe i had a black one and i was like i was in a guitar shop in a in a local city called lincoln and um that's not there anymore sadly to say but uh a lot of these shops aren't there anymore, are they? It's terrible. Um, but I saw a red strap and I was like, if I get that, I'll look like Billy Joe. Honestly, I don't, but you know. I thought I was cool because I had a red strap at the time, hence it's still there. And I had it really low as well, I did it like around my knees, because that's the way Billy Joe played, so that's the way I was going to play. And, yeah, this is it. If you want for this guitar, I don't know if I'll be here now talking to you lovely people out there. this guitar and there's not much to be said about it really other than it's just this is this is a dream come true absolute dream come true and it's partly because of you lot which I will never be able to express how much that means to me I will never there is no words there are enough there's nothing I can do to express the gratitude I, I have for you people out there, there is nothing I can do. You know, I really don't think there is. It's just beyond. I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. You know, and it, it just goes to show the power. And again, I don't want to sound really silly, but it does go show the power of people and, and like, you know, how amazing people are. And it's just like, I hope one day I can return the favour to all you out there. It just, it, it, I don't have the words, it's just something else this is. It really is something else. Thank you all very much indeed. Okie dokie, we all know and love this guitar. This is the Oswald John Strat, which I've had since February. Gift is me from Mr. Master Nick Oswald, and I am grateful every day for this guitar. I love it to bits, absolutely love it to bits. It's just, 
ridiculous. Just ridiculously good guitar. Everyone I took this guitar to, uh, um, guitar makers, friends who play guitar, have said, it's just, what? That is, it's so, everybody who's played it has gone, that is such a great guitar. There's just, there's something very, you know, there's something very special in this guitar, and I love it to bits. And again, it's another one of those guitars that will be with me until I'm no longer here to be able to play it. It, it will, it will be with me that long. I just, I just can't, I couldn't part with it for any amount of money. I just couldn't, I just could not do it. It's just something in it. And uh, it's starting to age. It's aging rapidly. It's got a night, because it's got nitro finish. The slightest knock and it, it dints it. And um, all the lacquer's starting to check. Uh, the lacquer's starting to sink into the wood grain as well in some places. I'm starting to go through the finish where my plectrum kind of goes, uh, where my plectrum scratches. It's got dints and dents around the bottom end of it. I'll have to do a close-up video actually on it and let you see some of the wear and tear it's had since, uh, cause I've only had it since February, but I've, I've played it every day. I've, I've played it every day, I kid you not. And I just love it, absolutely love it to bits. It really is just one of those special guitars and it sounds great. <laughs> John Strat, everybody. Oh, amazing. amazing guitar. Thank you, Master Nick. Ridiculously awesome guitar. Okay, moving on to the last guitar now. Okie dokie, so um, last guitar in my guitar collection. It's substantially less than the last time you saw it, but I think this video is actually longer. I don't know, I don't know. I think it's because I'm playing them this time. I'm not just kind of showing you them, I'm actually letting you hear them as well. But uh, this is my number one, basically. It's the guitar that I've learnt most on, spent most hours on. Had so many gigs, so many good gigs, so many crap gigs, so many horrendous gigs, so many like just ridiculously in the sky gigs. This is this is it. This is this is kind of I say this is this will always be my number one guitar. It really will. I mean. It's not to put the Oswald or, or the, the 62 or any of my other guitars down. It's just that this guitar has been with me for everything. Uh, literally everything. I literally, this is my, my friend, this is my companion. This is a guitar that when I'm gone, it comes with me kind of thing. I can't part with it even when I'm not here, so to say. So, so it's a bit weird to say and it's a bit morbid, but it's one of those, one of those things. It's just... This is so much a part of me, this guitar, that I just, I can't be without it, ever, can't be without this guitar. Um, that's kind of like a running theme with quite a lot of my guitars, that I can't be without them. And that, that you know, that, that's because guitars are not, it's, as much as it sounds weird, guitars are not always guitars, you know, they, they become something else. Um, the 62 Strat, the original owner, he, it, that, that guitar was not just a piece of wood that was his companion from when he bought it to you know up to up to recently that was his friend for that was his lifelong friend you know and and you know that's, just, that's exactly the same with me and this guitar this is this is my lifelong friend i bought it from new in 2004 it was made in 2003 i do believe i forget i think it's 2002 actually but either way yes 2002 it was made the same year i started playing guitar and i bought it in 2004 and it just like I say, we've done every we've done everything. I've been in so many bands with this guitar. I've done so much with it. It's been everywhere with me, through good, bad, and downright horrendous. This guitar has been with me, and it's it's saved me and helped me countless times. And I just I'm in, I'm in, I'm I'm indebted to this instrument, you know, because it really is the reason I'm still here. It really is, and that sounds really silly and morbid, but it really is. <laughs>
it's just ridiculous. I love this guitar to bits. The fret, the neck is just absolutely perfect. It's been refretted twice. It's beaten and battered and discoloured. It was white once. It probably looks white on the camera, but it's actually not. It's kind of like a cream colour. Apart from where my arm goes, which is white, because it keep, it just rubbed, obviously, because I played it that much, it's, it's kind of rubbed on there and, and worn into the finish. But the rest of it is kind of like it's off creamy colour. The scratch plate, scratch plate is broken there, 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 and there. It's hanging on by the skin of its teeth. I get a bit funny with this guitar. It, it's kind of like one of those life-changing things. It really is. And when I first bought it, like I said, I didn't, I didn't intend to go and buy this one. I didn't even know it was even in there, in the guitar shop I bought it in. But, you know, thankfully, whatever drew me to it, drew me to it, and uh, here we are. Yeah. But yeah, this is, the, this is the last guitar I have to show you today. That's my entire guitar collection now. I think it's 14. I don't know, I could be totally wrong. One, two, three, four. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, um, yeah, it, yeah, all the guitars I've kept mean something to me. They all, they all have either memories attached or they, or they just, they just, they've attracted me for some reason that un, 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 kind of unknown to me. I don't know why. Um, I love them so much, but I do. But most of them, I know exactly why I have them because I have just this connection uh, that goes beyond my understanding to them. You know, this guitar especially. But, um, but yeah, but all the guitars I've had, all the guitars I've kept have that kind of connection. All the guitars I've got rid of, I think it's about twenty odd guitars I sold. They didn't quite have that. It, they were kind of like that, but, but, but not really. But I, I loved them. To, I loved them to bits. But I didn't. They did, I didn't have the connection like I did with this or the '62 or the Oswald or my my vintage V6 or my Washburn or anything like that. They didn't, they didn't have that kind of connection. So it was like you know, it, it was tough selling some of them. Um, but it, you know, in in the long run, it you know. It was one of those things that I I had to do. You know. If that makes any sense. I don't know. It probably doesn't make sense. But anyway. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video though. On guitar collection update. I'm getting a bit gushy because of this guitar. But um, but yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Just to let you know. I'm running through my PV Bandit today. It's the Silver Stripe Solo Series. It's not the Red Stripe today. I thought, it was a bit, I thought I'd change it up a little bit. But um, yeah. You can't see it. It's just south camera. But uh, but yes. And no pedals by the way. No pedals. Just straight into the amp. Um but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you again very soon for another one. Uh, have a great morning, afternoon, good evening, and goodbye now. Saluting. Salute. Don't salute. It's in the army. The YouTube army, everybody. Hi there. I'm a private. I don't want that. Anyway, I've gone mad. I've lost my brain. See you later. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. Goodbye now.